when we talk about spiritual help, spiritual help is something that really helps define us as Muslims, as this problem. This is what gives us an extra edge in being able to deal with this. Spiritual help, like, uh, what is that? What would spiritual help be? Somebody help me out. What would Walk, spiritual? Zikr. There we go. Dua, dhikr. Let's say, for example, maybe we can divide it up with connection with Allah. And then number two, as connection with the people of Allah. And number three, the places of Allah, like we're in right now, masjid. So when we say connection with Allah, sometimes we find God in the darkest of places, in the hardest of times. And sometimes that's what we need in order to connect us back to something greater. Sometimes we don't call on him until something like a crisis happens. And addiction is a crisis. Addiction is a big crisis. If, whether you're a family member of somebody who has an addiction or you have an addiction yourself. It's a really, on one end, it's hard to struggle. But on the other end, from my perspective, seeing people come out of it, it can be a great blessing to bring them to something that they wouldn't have come to had they not had that problem in the first place. In other words, it's a type of discomfort that helps us transcend and get to something that's, that's better. So that's, that's, uh, that's Allah. We don't need an intermediary for that. Then there's the people of Allah. There's people of Allah that can guide us to like imams, like counselors, chaplains, um, that are, are versed in our tradition and can give us the real spiritual sustenance um, to get us there. Treatment works. So there's a lot of science and evidence that shows that treatment works. Spirituality also works. When we talk about addiction, spirituality is something that's been shown to help people do better. So people that have higher scores of spirituality tend to do better in treatment than those that don't. And why is that? For a lot of reasons. Number one, like just feeling down all the time, not feeling good, is something that drives people back to using substances. And spirituality in Islam can be something, Islam has a taste to it. Islam has an experience to it. And it has a sustenance to it that helps bring us out of really hard times and sustain us through hard times. Um, and then also it provides a sense of community. It's, it helps us think about things in a different way, reframe our problems. And Islam teaches us a way to think. It teaches us a way to think that gives us a sort of resilience and strength to make it through things. So treatment works, spirituality works, a lot of studies that show both. What do we mean by studies? Like when we talk about treatment, peer support groups, 12-step programs, um, and support groups like that, and treatment programs like rehab and medications, basically the way they prove this, the way we prove this is by splitting people up into two groups. The people with addiction that get the treatment versus the people with addiction that don't get the treatment, the people that get the treatment consistently do better. When the numbers are so good, then we take that treatment and put it in the toolbox of treatment. We call it a treatment for addiction. That's how we substantiate that. With the deen, it's the same way. With spirituality, it's the same way. How do we understand what is there to bring us back to life? That's Revelation, that's Quran, Sunnah, and that's through our scholars and our religious leaders. Which brings me to the second part. So now we understand treatment. What's the goal? The second part is what are the barriers to this? What are the barriers to getting people into a treatment program? If it works, great, let's get them there. But what are the barriers? Unfortunately, only a small percentage of people that can benefit from treatment get it. What are some of the barriers? So a lot of the barriers for treatment and connecting people back to this great wealth and inheritance of spirituality and Islam that we have, a lot of them are the same. One of the barriers I'll talk about is simply not understanding both of these, not understanding the benefit of these, and not understanding how to access these. 
So for example, with the treatment program, sometimes it's hard to figure out, well, what do I, how do I navigate getting into a treatment program? Do I start with peer support groups? Do I start with, let's say, an outpatient program where I see somebody once a week? Do I start with going to a, a detox to handle my body's cravings and the withdrawal that comes with addiction? So it's really important, number one, to learn about this problem and how to navigate addiction. And then recognize that treatment works and then not minimize it for our loved ones that are trying to get into treatment. The same thing holds for our dean. Sometimes what I find is people with addiction, it's hard for them to figure out how to navigate the dean. You have the sheikh, you have the imam, you have all these names, people get confused. Essentially, the fact remains that spirituality is important in treating the addiction. And the fact remains that we have an incredible inheritance in our deen. We have an incredible transformative power in our deen to help people who have an addiction. It's something that I see regularly. It's something that we see regularly. People who have this sort of transformation experience and they have this sort of spiritual awakening when it comes to addiction. And then they're able to transition over and find a new way of, of looking at the world and just a new way of being like a new way of being. Um, so how do we navigate that? So just like it's important to understand how to organize treatment, it's also important to know how to organize Dean. Sometimes I hear like, oh, we went to so-and-so, you know, this religious leader, and they we asked them about how to treat addiction, and they gave us this, this answer. And the question is, is I can tell you a lot of the imams that I work with, a lot of the religious scholars that I work with, a lot of the chaplains that I work with, they have an incredible understanding of how to manage addiction. They have an incredible understanding of how to navigate this problem. Imam Zaid, really amazing understanding of how to treat addiction when he talks about it, when I've asked him about it. We have a, a brother, an imam here, a chaplain here, really devoting his time and having a great understanding of how to navigate this. So what, 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 what sort of like is unfortunate is you really want to make sure you are able to navigate to people who have that religious knowledge and an understanding of the world to be able to serve as that guide for you in order to find that success. So there's treatment, know how to navigate it, know how to get it, don't put the cart in front of the horse. Same thing with the deen. Like when it comes to a spiritual awakening, like you look at the 12 steps, for example, the, the emphasis in terms of spirituality is on taking a daily inventory, doing muhasaba, looking inwards, figuring out what, how can I, what am I missing? How do I commit to honesty? How do I bring peace in my life? How do I, um, who did I harm today? How does that affect me? And how can I take a daily inventory daily to live by principles? And so if we're sort of focusing on, let's say, more outward aspects of Islam or, um, and not, not, not the inward and the outward, then that can be problematic. Also, if we're not knowing who to navigate to, to help with tapping into that spirituality, that can be problematic. The last thing I'll say is, when it comes to treatment, it's like a, um, sometimes it takes a couple of tries to figure out what makes sense. So rehab, sometimes people need one or more tries to make that work. 12-step groups, sometimes people need to try different 12-step groups to find a group that fits with them or a support group that fits with them. Same thing with the dean. We all have different people that we resonate with. So I wouldn't like look at 
one bad experience that comes with the deen. Maybe we had an uncle that was supposedly the religious person in our family and really judged us, or somebody else that we may have put on a pedestal and was a quote-unquote religious person. But I wouldn't stop there because I think spirituality is an important part to leverage, especially with our faith, in order to overcome this in terms of deen. Um, so I wouldn't stop there. Keep looking. Maybe we need to find somebody with more knowledge, with a wider breadth of an understanding of Islam, so they can know how to take people step by step into the right direction. And then, so that's addiction. Treatment exists. Barriers to addiction treatment exist. Knowing how to navigate, knowing how to um, not minimize treatment that exists. And number three, as a community, how we can work to help like a team, like pass people off into the right direction. So if we have somebody in our community that has an addiction, it's not their problem, it's our problem. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. None of you truly reaches that complete faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. I heard it in the khutbah today. It just felt right. Until he loves what he for his brother what he loves for himself. We should love for our brother to get out of these difficult situations. We should love for our brothers and sisters to find success. We should love for them to be relieved from difficult problems like this. And so as a community, I think coming from that attitude and that perspective is really important. And then, you know, the shame conversation, of course, always has to happen with addiction treatment. Because shame is an important emotion. Shame in our deen, it's a branch of our faith. Modesty is the modesty is a branch of our faith. So we're a tradition that modesty is important, not publicizing um, bad behavior and moral behavior is important. So shame, in, and shame has an important mechanism in society. It's painful. When I do something wrong and people find out about it, it's painful. It's a mechanism where I then go and rectify my behavior. So let's say robbing or cheating, or stealing, something we would all agree, agree is wrong. We don't want to like normalize that. That's not what we're talking about here. We don't want to like say everything's okay, it's all okay. We want to speak out against it. So let's say you have somebody in your family, your nephew is just found, starting to experiment smoking with marijuana. Is that, a, is that a part where we say, you're okay, I'm okay, everything's okay, Let's just not have a difficult conversation about this. No, have the difficult conversation. Tell them, you know, is this in line with your values? Is this, um, you know, I know you, I know, I know your potential. Have that conversation. What I'm talking about with shame is addiction. Somebody who's like stuck in that hole of addiction and they're trying to climb out and they're starting to make steps. They're not perfect. We're all not perfect. They're starting to make steps as a community, as a family. So think of the individual, then they have the family, then there might be an extended family or social network, then the community at large. It's important for us to have an off ramp out of it, off of addiction. We don't want to be the barrier to not being able to hear people, hold their hand, and get them help. We want to be the people that hold our hands and guide them to help and, and, and create a path for them to get help. So it's important to recognize when to be hold boundaries and when to, to um, help people get to that goal of addiction treatment. Somebody coming around the masjid more, somebody coming to the, the dars more, trying to learn more about Islam somebody thinking about getting the treatment, somebody making steps in the right direction. Generally, what's been found with addiction treatment is compassionate, motivational approaches work. And like punitive, harsh treatments 
tend to not work, maybe for a short time, but not, not long lasting success. So when we talk about addressing shame and stigma, we're talking about in a specific subset of people that are struggling with addiction, need professional help. Um, and what I would encourage us to do is keep an eye out for people, people that are struggling. And if you're not sure where somebody is, time is the diagnostic test. If somebody, let's say, um, if somebody is, is um, coming around to the masjid more often, coming to more spiritual gatherings, so on and so forth, we want to encourage them to that. And so let's say something's not in adab of the moment or in that place, or it's not just, it's, it's out of place a little bit. You know, we don't want to beat our brothers and sisters up. We want to pull them up. And we want to keep attracting them back. So time is the diagnostic test in the sense that getting to know that person, because for one person, it can be a step back. For another person, something can be a step forward. Let's say somebody's praying Fajr closer to the end of the time. For somebody, that's a step forward in praying Salah. For other people, they need a pull up. Um, and with that, inshallah, I'll end.